In front of this statue, less than 30 years ago, citizens of Chemnitz protested for the fall of a totalitarian regime. Last August, however, a very different kind of protest happened here. Violent, anti-immigrant riots that turned Chemnitz into the symbol of Germany's newly assertive far right. Their rage echoed an era Germany thought it had left behind. But this is Chemnitz in 2018. The Brühl Boulevard was a really important part of the city. And then when the wall came down, everything changed. And the place was dilapidated for like about 20 years. And so Inspire came in here about four years ago. We talked to the city council and we said, look, here we're a handful of Christians from different churches and we just want to try and be a part of uh, breathing new life into this place. standing in front of Inspire. Uh, this is our living room on the Brill. It's a meeting place for all the neighbors here on the Brill. Um, and we have various events and things on offer here where we just build community and people come together and chill and hang out and experience live music. Like tonight, we've got Music Monday or um, Learn English, Senior Citizens. Offers for kids as well, kids program. We have whiskey tastings. We have other things where pe folks just come together, get to hang out with some really cool Christians. <laughs> I've been blessed to be involved in a lot of interesting projects and blessed even just to come as an Irishman to Germany and work in the, in the German uh, United Methodist Church. But this is pretty radical even for me. I, I thought I was very progressive and out there and streetwise. It's asked me to totally reevaluate and rethink what mission is, what ministry is, even what church is. I was baptized as a child in a Methodist church in Belfast, but that was it, that was a done thing. And we never went to church. And it was only as a young man of 18 that I actually started thinking about God. And I started thinking about God because my life was pretty messed up as a young man, as a teenager. And for two years, I abused um, substances. I sniffed glue uh, for two years used all the money I could find to buy the glue. And when I didn't have the money, I would go into the, uh, the markets and just steal the glue. I had a pretty critical um, turning point. Uh, God reached into my life there and um, heard my prayers uh, and, and changed the direction of my life. The team behind Inspire is not very big. It's at the moment about up to 10 people. Most of them are working as um, volunteers. No, it's my heart really, the, right from the beginning, is, was just to build up a kind of community of believers and how, with a goal, how to influence and how to help the whole society to, to grow. And it's also really a colorful team. 
not always easy characters and just people like you and me. And but it's great. <laughs> so this is the best cafe on the brew. Yes. Hi Tina. Hi. How are you doing? I just uh, <coughs> wanted to ask about tonight. Inspire is about ministering to people. It's about serving people. It's about serving this community. Set up here in front of the windows here with the We like to cafe in the put background. it this way. Yeah. People of good faith working with people of goodwill. <laughs> so we started the whiskey tasting because we had a guy in our team, my co-leader, Uli, who was a real expert on whiskey. To taste whiskey, to enjoy whiskey, really takes time. You can't take a glass and just keep it inside because you have to smell it. it, it you have, the flavors need time to develop. And you sit together with other people and, uh, at the table and you share a bit how, how does it smell, how does it taste. So that really takes time. And at the same time, the relationships ca can develop. So that's really a similarity between taking time to drink a whiskey and also taking time to invest in relationships. I guess having a pastor and another guy, they are not the typical people you think would be involved in whiskey tastings, but it's just doing life, a way of building community and, and a way of uh, connecting with people. I was afraid that it's more like in, in a church way Christian, but um, when I meet, met especially you um, and Uli and the other guys, they were really open-minded for every kind of person coming here and being open for everyone. Yeah. It was really nice and it's a warm atmosphere, atmosphere here and it's nice to see that it's not narrow-minded. I feel comfortable. Yeah. I really feel comfortable. It's nice to come here. Inspired, this is a thing that has been here for four years, here on the Brühl. The people who come to Inspire, to our whiskey tastings, to our bring and share brunch, to our singer-songwriter evenings or the other events that we have, are a weird and wonderful bunch of lovely people, mainly from the neighborhood here. And I would say 90% of them are non-church people. <laughs> Great place to meet new people and open-minded. Okay, okay, well, uh, that's really important. What do you mean by that? I mean, by that? I mean look at me. <laughs> most people, most people uh, change the street sign to the city. Okay, okay. <laughs> at the start, we did have some major opposition. Um, there was even an editorial written in a culture magazine and the editorial was, was basically saying, avoid Inspire. They're Christians, uh, the place looks beautiful and nice and quaint and inviting, but they really just want to evangelize you and get you into their club. Uh, and this kind of uh, shocked us at the start, but um, we served people and people got to know us. And everyone who gets to know us, they experience hospitality, love, community, all good things that are good for this neighborhood. People just have like a potluck breakfast brunch thing, bring something um, to eat and just enjoy being here together, enjoying the community. Just a few weeks ago, we had Easter and we had the opportunity just um, as Christians to talk about what Easter is. And we were really surprised that a lot of people had no idea what Easter was about and what the meaning of Easter was. We are no Christians and the it was okay. They are Christian, they do Christian <laughs> things, and okay. Um, and so I thought it's, it's a community, and so 
I will not fit in. Okay. So be because I'm not a Christian, yes. I know Christian people, um, they, they always uh, ask, okay, uh, do you believe in God? So, no, so why? It, it, it's, it's not, um, yeah, not, not that nice uh, talking with them, and so it's, yeah. I don't like it. So that's why I thought I will not fit in here, and so yeah. oh. I, will, I will not come here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here right now. <laughs> But now I'm here and I love it to come to the Sunday brunch. And here it's it's open, it's cool, it's relaxed, and it's it's great. And a lot of nice people. I get the question. I understand the question. People from maybe a traditional church environment are asking where where's the spiritual formation taking place? Um, where's the worship services? I get that. I actually think that building community. Doing life with these people, um, our friends, our neighbors, because Jesus is a part of my life. I also do Jesus with them, if I can put it that way. And in the everyday connections that we have, we just have an opportunity to worship, to serve, to bless, to be salt and light in this, in this part of town. And I actually, in many ways, see our Music Monday singer-songwriter evening as an act of worship. People are spiritual beings. They might not be interested in our church events, but it doesn't make them any less spiritual. They also want to make a connection with something greater than them. So we also offer Holy Communion from the bar. At the end of the bar, we have this little picture with a cross on it and the words, love you. And so we invite people to this cross and, and offer them Holy Communion. Frankie's the first guy you see when you come in to inspire on a Monday night to the singer-songwriter concerts. And, and Frankie has gotten to know the team here really well. Um, He comes, he always drinks a mango lassi, he always drinks the same drink, it's kind of like a milkshake drink. And he says, I'm, we're just introducing tonight um, Holy Communion from the bar. Yeah. And he asked me, he says, are, 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 you, are you a pastor? And I says, yes, I am, I am. And he smiled and he said, oh. Uh, and I says, yeah, come on over and have a look. So I put the wafers out and I didn't, I didn't have any wine at hand. So I grabbed a bottle of cranberry juice and I, and I put it into two little glasses. And I was just about to serve Frankie when, whenever he grabbed the wafer and took it. And he said, broken for you. And he served me. I wanted to serve him, but he served me and he blessed me. And I am just so proud that the very first person to experience Holy Communion in Inspire was my mate, Frankie. Yeah. Uh, we are a little bit, uh, in Chemnitz, we are a little bit boring. Yeah, Chemnitz, you, you, many people say we are a boring city. Yeah? Uh, we go to work, we go to sleep and go to work, back to work. So, um, But you, you, you take our hands, yeah? And said, uh, "Let's try it. Let's let's do some, something new. Let's let let's put together our ideas and uh, build a new thing." Yeah, mm. we are a real community now. So we made it. We made it. Near Bembridge Town in the county town, one morning last July. I'm coming from Northern Ireland, which was a divided society. I grew up in that divided society. Belfast is a walled city. I come to a country which was also formerly divided. And I've learned through my experiences in Northern Ireland how important reconciliation is, how important bridge building is, how important it is to try and understand the other. And so when I see what's going on currently in Germany and more specifically right here in Chemnitz, where there's this massive problem with racism and right-wing neo-Nazi politics and propaganda. Inspires right in the heart of it, building bridges, 
um, breaking down walls, doing life with all kinds of people. <laughs>